talk about the sine and cosine ratios. A week ago Friday, before spring break, we talked about the tangent ratio. And I know it's been a long time, so I want to review that first, and that will help us get back on track and focus and remember what we're doing. Okay? So, Sokotoa is a mnemonic. A mnemonic is a way of remembering something. So, we have Sokotoa, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, and it can be very helpful for, with what we're learning today. The problem is, if you don't know how to spell it, you won't be able to use the mnemonic. So, one way of remembering how to spell Sokotoa is to remember the phrase or the sentence, some old horse caught a horse taking oats away. And there are lots of other phrases that you could come up with that would make, make sense. Some old horse caught a horse taking oats away. Silly, I know. But you, oats. Because old horses eat oats. Okay? So you can come up with your own mnemonic if it helps. Okay? So here we go. Let's remember what we were talking about uh, in, in just a moment. So... Before we get very far into this, why would we ever use trig? I have a video, okay? We use trig when we aren't able to measure things directly. So, for example, this is a video I took of my son flying a kite last spring. That's by our house, okay? So he was so proud of himself because he was. this is the first time he's ever flown a kite by himself. And he wasn't getting it caught in a tree or anything like that. And he was, it didn't drop, it didn't fall out of the sky. And there he is. All right, so the question comes up, Mom, how high was that kite? He did. He said, how high, how high do you think that kite was above the ground? And there are other times when you need to know a height of something and aren't able to directly measure it. Okay? So other than grab, getting in a helicopter and finding out how, being level with it, you know, we've got to come up with an indirect way of measuring this. So what I did was I took a picture of him flying that kite. I asked the neighbor's permission to go back into his backyard and say, hey, can I fly this kite, you know, can I take a picture of him? And he said, sure, no problem. So here's my son. He's holding the kite three feet up by his chest. And... I measured this in GeoGebra, 33.9 degrees, there's the kite, and we want to figure out how high that kite is. That's our goal for today. Okay? To do that, we're going to talk about the sine, cosine, and tangent. We could, yeah, let's come up with an educated guess and see what we think. So if this was three feet, how far do you think this is? 50 feet, 22, 45, okay, 96, 100, okay, 101.7, so we got all kinds of estimations, right, okay, I heard 75, yep, this, this much is 3. I heard 20 something, right? 45. Okay, we have lots of estimates, right? And let's find out. We'll, we'll, we'll work through this and figure out how, it, how much it was. Okay? So here we go. So remember last Friday, a week ago Friday, we talked about the tangent ratio. Andrew, wake up, please. We could go Friday, we talked about the tangent ratio. That was the TOA of SOKOTOA. And the tangent stood for what over what? We have to know hypotenuse, opposite and adjacent. We're looking for the opposite and the adjacent. So the opposite of angle A is the one furthest away. The adjacent is the one that's next to it. Okay? So, with this drawing, with this particular triangle, what two numbers are we looking for? 
15 and 36. And you do not have to reduce as far as I'm concerned. 15 over 36 is good. Okay? Everybody has this one written down. Questions about tangent? Okay. So. Okay. The tangent of A is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And in this case, the opposite side has a measure of 15. The adjacent side has a measure of 36, so 15 over 36. Okay? All right, the next slide. Now we want to talk about the SO part of SOHCAHTOA, the S-O-H. What do you think SO stands for? Well, the S, the S is the sign, okay? And it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the S stands for sine. Okay, sine is another button you're going to learn in your calculator today. And the sine of angle A is going to be the opposite, the side opposite angle A divided by the hypotenuse. So here's angle A. Opposite of it is the one furthest away. Adjacent is next to, and we always know the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. So the sine of angle A is going to be what over what? 15 over 39. And I'm not going to ask you to reduce. Just stop. That's it. You're done. Okay? It is simple. As long as you can write Sokotoa and you know which is opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Okay? All right, next slide. Cosine. The cosine of an angle is the ka part. So when we want the cosine of an angle, what do you think we're going to do? Take the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent over the hypotenuse here, which one is adjacent to angle A? 36. Which one's the hypotenuse? 39. So 36 over 39, and you're done. Ladies. Okay, 36 over 39. All right, so now they want us to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of this particular triangle. Okay. So the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle A on this particular triangle, start with the sine. First, identify which angle you're looking for, okay, and then start to, to use the Sokotoa part. And it's a good idea to rewrite this every time you're working these kinds of problems on the top of your paper. So you learn to spell it and you learn what those ratios are. Okay, so what is the sine of angle A? So stands for opposite over hypotenuse. Which one's opposite angle A? 12. Which is the hypotenuse? 13. And we're done. Okay? Cosine of angle A. Cosine stands for? Adjacent, adjacent over hypotenuse. So which which side is adjacent to angle A? Five. Which one's the hypotenuse? Tangent of angle A. Tangent of angle A stands for the TOA. Opposite over adjacent. Which one's opposite? Twelve. 
12. Which one's adjacent? 5. And we're done. What questions do you have? We're good? Thumbs up? Ladies, please. Okay, next slide. Now we want the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle B. So we locate angle B. Sine of B is what, Riley? It's going to be 5 over 13. Very good. Cosine of B is what, Caleb? Of B, yep. Cosine of B. Which one's the adjacent to it? Wh which side is adjacent? 12. And which one's the hypotenuse? Okay, so 12 over 13. Tangent of B is what, Brandon? 5 over, 5 over 12. Very good. Okay? Make sense? Okay. So, our next slide is going to talk specifically about the sine, cosine, sine and cosine of complementary angles. Okay? And... We're going to talk about the sine of angle A first of all. So angle A in this case is 34 degrees. So we're looking at this angle, and we know Sokotoa So Liz, what is the sine of this 34 degree angle going to be? attention. Take notes. It's going away. 2.7 over 4.9. 2.7 is opposite. 4.9 is the hypotenuse. Okay. Cosine of 34 degrees. What do you think, Alex? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Four over four point nine. Good job. This is all you have to know. Okay. Now let's switch gears and let's talk about the sine of fifty six degrees. What's the sine of fifty six degrees, Emmanuel? Almost. This time we want 56 degrees. Good. 4 over 4.9. So the most important part is to locate your angle and then go from there. Okay? And Jen, what is the cosine of 56 degrees going to be? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So which one was adjacent? No, no. Yes, 2.7 over, or 4.9, good. Didn't hear ya. Okay? So, so far, so good. We didn't lose anybody, right? We're all okay? Now, what do you notice about these ratios? They're just flipped, aren't they? These two are the same, and these two are the same. Okay? What do you notice about these angles? 34 and 56. There's 
12 de degrees difference between them, but how much do they add up to? Almost. Add up to 90, okay? So they are complementary angles, right? Hence the names sine and cosine. The sine is the same thing as the cosine of a 90 degree removed angle. Absolutely. Okay. So if we notice that these two are complementary, right? then the sine of angle A will be the same thing as the cosine of angle B. The sine of 34 is the cosine of 56, and the sine of 56 is the cosine of 34. That's what the co means in cosine, complementary. Okay, cosine for complementary. And you can use that to your advantage. Okay? All right, so Will, if I have the cosine of 69 degrees, what will that be equal to? Sine of what? If I know the cosine of 69 degrees, that's going to be equal to the sine of what? 21. Why is it 21? Because 69 and 21 add up to 90, and the cosine is the co-function, the complementary function of the sine. They have to equal, equal 90. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I wanted to write the sine of 33 in terms of the cosine, what would I do, Derek? Find the number that makes it 90. So 90 minus the 33 is how much? 57. And away we go. Okay? Yes. So all we're doing is we're saying the cosine of whatever 90 minus 33 is will be equal to the sine of 33, okay? And the cosine of whatever 90 minus 69 is will be the sine of that number, okay? So far so good? All right, keep moving here. Calculators out, make sure they're in degree mode, okay? I'm missing a calculator, by the way. Anybody? I'm actually missing two now. Someone may have borrowed one. Anybody remember borrowing one from a week ago Friday and not returning it? Check your bags just to be sure. Okay. So, calculators in degree mode. It should already be there if you used it last week, last time, but it should say a D or a DEG somewhere on the on the screen. Shouldn't see a shouldn't say an R R A D G or G R A D. So you're in degree. Yep. Okay. You want to be in D R D E G. Yep. You're in degree mode, and you're in degree mode. Okay. Um. Yep. And press enter. Or and you're in degree mode, okay? All right, so we're going to type tangent of 18. So most of your calculators are straightforward. You push the tangent first, and then 18, and press Enter. If you don't get the right answer, you can also try, you might be backwards, you might have to say 18 tangent. Okay, so tangent of 18, 32.5. Or 0.32, let's go to four decimal places. And I'm using the approximately equal to symbol because we had to round. Okay, it keeps going on and on forever. Everybody get 0.3249? Tangent 18. That's all you have to do. Yep. Okay. 
Um, if you don't have calculator at home, if you have a computer, you can use the computer. Um, your phone, your, your, yeah, if you turn it sideways. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, you have to have your rotation turned on. Okay? All right, sine of 77. And it's a good idea to have a calculator. You're going to need it for Algebra 2 next year anyway. 0.9744, right? Okay. 3, 7, right? And that 7 is going to make the 3 of 4. And then cosine of 87. Point zero five two three. Um, it came out to 0.97437, and the 7 makes the 3 become a 4. I press um, sign, sign 7, 7, enter. Okay. You, you need to round up to the, four, you know, the fourth decimal place if it's a bigger than 5. All right, we're good? All right, next slide. All right, so now we're going to find the values of x and y using the sine and cosine, and we're going to find this to the nearest tenth place, one, one decimal point. Okay? So we're given a 35-degree angle, and what does the 53 respond, correspond to? Opposite of the 90 degree is the hypotenuse. So we have the hypotenuse. Okay. Which part is x then? The opposite. And which part is y? Adjacent. All right. So we want to find x first. Doesn't matter. We could find y first. Let's just pick x. If we want to find x and we know the hypotenuse and we know the angle, what ratio are we going to use? Which trig function? Sine, yep. So we say the sine of 35 is equal to what over what? The so stands for opposite over hypotenuse, right? Which one's opposite? X over 53. Okay, if we want to get the x by itself and it's being divided by 53, what do we need to do? Yep, multiply. We want 53 times the sine of 35 degrees, and we'll find out what x is. So in your calculator, 53 sine of 35. 53 times the sine of 35, what do we get? 30. I got 30.4. 30.39, 30 which is going to round it to 30.4. You didn't get that. Try again. Make sure you get that. You might have to hit equals. So we want to take 53 times the sine... 53 times the sine of 35. So type. Yeah, you're going to have to go backwards. So you want to say um, 35 sine and then times 53. There you go. So you have to do your, your, sine, your angle first, then sine, and then the perfect. Okay? Everybody get 30.4? Yep. So sine 35, close your parentheses. Close them, not, not open. And then times 53. Okay? All right, so 30.4. Now we're ready for the Y. So Y is which part of the triangle? Adjacent. So we need, and we have the hypotenuse, so now we need to use the K part. So the cosine of 35 is equal to 
Jason over hypotenuse. Yep. And we want to get the y by itself, and it's being divided by 53. So what are we going to do? Yep. So we'll take 53 times the cosine of 35 to find our y. To one decimal place, did you get 43.4? Okay. So see which parts you have, and away you go. I got 43.4. Now, one tendency that some people have, and it's those who want to be risky and walk on the wild side, is to say, hey, I know my opposite now. So I could use tangent, adjacent, opposite adjacent, right? But you want to be careful with that because if you have made a mistake on finding your opposite, that can be a domino effect and will make a mistake on finding your adjacent as well. So it's usually better to start with the information you have been given to begin with rather than use an answer that you came up with. Okay? All right. Now, when we say we want the exact values of the sine, cosine, and tangent, that should be an alert that you're looking for, you're looking at a special right triangle. You either have a 45, 45, 90, or a 30, 60, 90 that we are supposed to know things about. Okay? So for this particular problem, which kind of triangle do we have? 45, All right, so this is a 45, 45, 90. What part are we given? The hypotenuse, okay? So we know the hypotenuse. How do we get from a hypotenuse to the leg? Yep, divide by the square root of 2. So when we take 9 and we divide it by the square root of 2, that means we can't leave a radical in the bottom. So we multiply it by itself, which introduces it to the numerator as well. So this will be 9 square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so let me do that again. So when we're dividing 9 by the square root of 2, that would be great if we didn't have a radical in the bottom. Okay, anytime you're going from a hypotenuse to a leg on a 45-45, those were those notes we took. Okay. And if this is 9 radical 2 over 2, the other leg also has to be 9 radical 2 over 2, because it's an uh, isosceles right triangle. Okay. We did some easier ones where it was something like 7 radical 2, and we ended up with a 7 and a 7. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about these. We'll continue to talk about these until they make sense, hopefully. Okay. A lot of writing. Now we're ready to talk about the sine of angle A. So this angle is 45 degrees. The sine of 45 degrees will be equal to what over what? Opposite over the hypotenuse. Which one's opposite this 45 degree angle? 9 square root of 2 over 2. Which one's the hypotenuse? The 9. And that's a mess. This is as hard as you're ever going to see. I'm never going to give you anything this tough on the test. But I want you to, I want you to practice it and see it. So not quite. Because we'd like to not have fractions and fractions. Okay? So what is 9 over? 1. Okay? We're going to simplify this a little bit. Okay? If we simplify, most of the time I'm going to give you something that divides evenly, like 8 or 4, and then you won't have that 2 to deal with, okay? So if we have this 9 over 1, I want to get rid of it, so I'm going to invert it and multiply. Take it times 1 ninth. Okay? That makes this denominator go away, and it makes these 9s cancel. So what's my final result? Square root of 2 over 2. We have. That is the sine of 45 degrees. Okay? 
Now that's a lot of work. And sometimes memorization is just honestly better. If you get to the point where you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and I ask you for the sign of 45, and you tell me that it's a square root of 2 over 2 because you memorized it, I won't expect you to show any work. And if you memorize it for this class and have it memorized for Algebra 2, you'll be in great shape because you'll need to know it again in Algebra 2. Okay? Now, hard part's done. Because if the sine of 45 is a square root of 2 over 2, what's the cosine of 45? Square, square root of 2 over 2. Because what is 45 and 45? 90. They're 90, right? So the cosine is going to be square root of 2 over 2 as well. They're co-functions, complementary functions. Did I lose anyone there? Yeah, it's a lot easier and it's very simple to memorize. Okay, now here's another one that's easy. Okay, tangent of A. The tangent of A is the opposite over the adjacent, right? What's opposite 45? 9 square root 2 over 2. What's the adjacent to this 45? Okay. 9 square root 2 over 2, isn't it? Opposite over adjacent. What is 9 squared to 2 over 2 over 9 squared to 2 over 2? 1. So the tangent of 45 is 1. Another one that's easy to remember. Mm -hmm. Because we use it in Algebra 2. Memorize it. We use that poster in Algebra 2, and then they didn't have to. The sooner you memorize it, the less, less you'll have to worry about next year. Um, the bottom row is the Sokotoa part, right? Oh, which where things are positive? Nope. It's algebra two stuff. Okay. All right. And then we're not worried about sine, cosine, and tangent of B because those are all 45 degree angles, aren't they? We just did it. Yep. Always gonna be the same. Okay. We won't because it's a right angle. Okay? We are close. We're so close. Okay. So let's talk about this one real quick. Sine, cosine, and tangent of a 30, 60, 90 now. These are easier. Okay? All right. So angle A is 30. So we want to know what's the sine of angle 30, of 30 degrees. Okay? Good because you notice the poster, right? Let's see why it's 1 over 2. Here's my hypotenuse, right? Okay. The hypotenuse to the short leg, what do we do? Almost. Hypotenuse to the short leg. Divided by 2, because remember, if we extended this out, it would be half as big as the whole equilateral triangle. So this is 4. Okay. How do we get from the short leg to the long leg? Multiply by the square root of 3. Okay. So far so good? No? Where did I lose you? Most of the 45-45s and the 30-60s? Okay, I'll, I'll help you. Did I lose anybody else in the 45-45s and the 30-60-90s? Guys, you've got to focus or you won't get this stuff. Okay, side conversations have to stop. Fraction, please. Okay. All right, so the sine of 30 is the opposite over the hypotenuse. 4 over 8, which reduces to? One half. Okay. The cosine of 30. Ladies, please. Okay. Now we're talking about the adjacent over the hypotenuse. 
adjacent is four square roots of three, right? Hypotenuse is eight. That reduces to four divided by eight, or eight divided by four, basically one half, okay? Square root of three over two. All right. Tangent of angle A. Tangent of 30. Opposite over adjacent, right? Four divided by four square root of three. Okay. So it'll be one over square root of three. But we can't leave it as 1 over the square root of 3 because we can't leave a radical in the denominator. So it comes up. When it goes up, the 3 will just be a plain 3 in the bottom. Okay? Now, the good news is the hard part's done. Hard part's finished. Because if I want the sine of 60, that should be equal to the cosine of what? Mm -hmm. Cosine of 30 was the square root of 3 over 2. So the sine of 60 is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. Okay? The cosine of 60 will be equal to what? the sine of 30. The sine of 30 was 1 half, so the cosine of 60 is 1 half. And tangent. Tangent of, 30, of 60, we have to figure out. Opposite over adjacent. Opposite, adjacent, so it's flipped, right? So 4 square roots of 3 over 4 reduces to square root of 3. The way that I remember the tangent is the tangent of 30 has all those 3's in it, and the tangent of 60 doesn't have as much. It just has a radical 3. Okay? So if you want to memorize those and not have to show your work, you're welcome to do that. Okay? All right. So last example, we're back to the kite flying. We've got my son, he's holding a kite three feet above the ground, okay? It's where his chest was, I measured him. And he has all the string out. This is 50 feet of string. This in red. Yep, this is my younger son. Just turned seven, three. Okay? So we want to figure out how high the kite is off the ground. Okay? So we're just, um, it's the, uh, my neighborhood. So we're trying to find out what x is. Okay? So we know an angle. We're trying to find the what part? The opposite. We know the hypotenuse, right? So which one are we using? So ka or toa? The sign, the sign of, sign of 33.9 is equal to what over what? X over 50. If X is being divided by 50, what do we need to do? Yep, so 50 times the sign of 33.9. So when we do that, what do we get? Everybody get 27.9? Are we done? Almost, but we forgot about something. Nope, nope. How tall was he? 
three feet. So it was actually three feet higher, wasn't it? So 30.9 feet. Because he wasn't laying on the ground flying it, he was standing there. Okay? If you wanted to find how far away the shadow would have been if it was directly below, we could find the cosine. Okay? Homework's at the bottom of your sheet.